Welcome to the intro. I'm your host, Jess Huddleston. And on today's episode, we are kicking things into high gear with seven-piece Montreal rock band Teke Teke, who are reviving Japanese psychedelia in a beautiful way. Here they are performing Yoro Ni. Wow. Teke Teke. Uh, so much talent in one room. I feel so honored to have you here. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. Oh, it's my pleasure. I love the show. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I'm a CBC listener. Love it. So we're stoked to be here. Thank you. Well, we're so happy to have you. So can you introduce yourselves and the rest of the crew here? Yes, of course. Jan on drums, Mishka on bass, Etienne on trombone, Yuki on flutes, but flute today, <laughs> Maya on vocals, Hidetaka on guitar. And what is my name? Serge. <laughs> Serge. I'm Serge. It's a group effort. I play guitar. 
Amazing. Yeah. So nice to meet everyone. And again, thanks for coming in. Nice to meet you. So I'd love to hear about the name Teke Teke. This has a fascinating and a bit of a gruesome backstory. I guess you're referring to the ghost story? Yes, yeah. yes. That's the first thing you find when you Google search, right? but it has nothing to do with that. Okay. And our Japanese teacher here <laughs> can explain uh, the origin of teke teke. teke teke. So teke teke is the sound of the riff, uh, the surf uh, guitar when you do. This no is way. the teke teke. It is an onomatopoeia in uh, in Japanese that is teke teke. And also we are we are uh, in the 70s, uh, 60s, 70s. Uh, there were a lot of people uh, dressing like uh, surfer. Right. in Japan because it was the fashion but uh, uh, we were laughing at the people uh, who were wearing the surfer fashion but they they couldn't uh, surf we were calling teke teke <laughs> right. so teke teke was a slang too amongst the teenagers for surfers who didn't know how to surf so we found, you know the combination of the the two surf uh, elements uh, was uh, interesting to us i guess i love yeah. that that's a much better backstory than what i thought <laughs> right because it is fresh and it is unique, but you're right. It's this incredible nod to, you know, 50s, 60s Japanese surf rock, which is yeah. so captivating, yet not widely heard in the mainstream. So I'm wondering, what was that seedling where you thought, this is something more people should know about. This is something that people should be pulled into the way that you were. Our generation was brought up on animation from Japan, but dubbed in French, right. but with the music... That was from the 60s and 70s, you know, uh, from Japan. So I feel like when we play in Quebec, there's like, people are like, oh, this sounds familiar, but it's, kind it's of know exotic. This. And yeah, 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 yeah. So that's interesting. Because we sing in Japanese right away, it's like, oh, okay, this is like, the main influences are from, from Japanese music from that era, but it's not true. There's so much more and... Uh, and coming from everybody in the band. So that to us is a lot more interesting. And, and yes. it feels like uh, we're moving forward and looking ahead instead of like being nostalgic. And So these songs are so complex and layered. What's it like putting them together, thinking them up with such a big group? Oh there God. are many cooks in the kitchen yeah. here. After the CBC thing, we're going to go to an izakaya and we're having like a dinner meeting. Nice. And this is the first question that I'm going to bring up. Like, How do we do it? What's the creative process in this band? How do we do it? You know, because it is uh, it is crazy with seven people. Yeah. But if we talk about Shirushi, the first album, I, I guess I came up with most of, of the ideas. And that's how it happens. Usually I'll, I'll bring like an idea. And then, um, and then in my head, it's like, okay, it's all figured out. I have a song, but it doesn't mean anything. Like it's not figured out. It's, it's just, I figured it out, but I have to bring it to the band and then we figure it out together. Yeah. And only then it's a ticket ticket song, but we'll see later tonight. We'll talk about it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and tell me about this next song that you're going to perform. The next one is Dobugawa. Dobugawa in Japanese, uh, it means a uh, dirty river, oh. uh, like uh, all the the the, the yeah. all the well, factories from a city would right? dump their you know their garbage and dirty water into the the Dobugawa. It's a metaphor that uh, all the world uh, hide the uh, from the city or the yeah, all the, the lies the, or yeah. everything going uh, that dirty river. The story is that uh, yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> I can see it in my brain. So now uh, I need yeah. to hear it. Okay, <laughs> okay well let's, let's hear it. Thank you it. so much.
What a beautiful, beautiful song. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Something interesting I have read that you said is that a common theme in your music is positive destruction and then rebirth, which I love. I think that's a massive theme, especially in the world today right now. Breaking down barriers, breaking down pre-existing systems and paradigms in order to grow something new and enter that phase of rebirth. I'm wondering if you can tell me a little bit more about what you mean by that. Well, it's funny because uh, we were just talking about creative process and all that. And actually, this is also something we applied to um, for the, the, the song making, for the uh, songwriting, uh, is that I would come up with my ideas and we would destroy my ideas together and put the pieces back together in a different way and get a, a different song. So that's also part of like... That's that very thing cool. That we said. Also, like uh, rebirth is like uh, uh, we think ah my identity I'm like this, but uh, just start to have a question mm -hmm. or uh, to have a courage to to question and uh, to look look at wide, and then uh, we have to put the more light in uh, the dark. Uh, unconsciousness part that yes. what we don't know and uh, we will find uh, uh, another identity so identity is uh, it's always there but uh, not there at the same time it can be something uh, and also i mean i think maybe because like you know i'm half japanese half french canadian he's half japanese half french so we all have issues with identity <laughs> like we're all you know kind of, we, we, we were confronted to we have no choice to think about it and like my whole life i had to you know try to figure out where i belong and stuff so it's like uh that's part of that too yeah me me too i'm from japan and uh, when i was in japan i didn't like so much japanese culture right. <laughs> but when i came to canada i started to see more from afar and uh, i started to discover much more and uh, but i never thought that uh, I'm Japanese or I'm Canadian or whatever. I, uh, I, I never had that kind of attachment to it. But uh, yeah, identity is something. Yeah, it's a big deal for us. Absolutely. And, and yeah. Maya, Maya is uh, playing a lot of uh, roles uh, in each uh, song. She's, she changed characters and uh, it's like a play each time. So each time she's another identity, another uh, person. Totally. That's a great way of saying it. I really love the way that you worded that, the courage to question. I think that's incredibly important in this climate. And I think it's a luxury to be able to constantly attempt to redefine ourselves mm -hmm. and, yeah. and find our home, literally, and then, you know, within ourselves as well. Mm -hmm. Speaking yeah, of yeah. describing and giving us that image, can you tell me about the next song? Karakara. Called Karakara. It's, it's like onomatope that... Uh, uh, Wind mill, wind mill, or like, mill? A, or like a hamster wheel, or like a lots of uh, onomatopoeia in, yeah. in the Japanese language. It's the image that uh, exactly like uh, like uh, talking about identity. Uh, the mask is uh, all changing <laughs> because in Japan, I think uh, in. It, Equality? How do you say yeah, that? Yeah, inequality is still <laughs> a, a big, uh, a, a big, big issue, issue, a big thing. Big issue in Japan still. So. Gara gara is kind of like the sound of like masks of people just... <laughs> yes, <laughs> amazing. Thank you so much for painting all of these pictures for us today. I've had such a great time chatting with you. I feel like Thank I've you. learned a lot of new things and I'm really happy that we were able to meet here. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, so you so for coming nice. in. Thank you yes, much. okay, let's hear this last song. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
I hope you enjoyed this episode of the intro. For more, you can hang out here or you can head over to cbcmusic.ca slash the intro.